Alrighty, welcome back to part two of PK's lab, where we're looking at some long-range FPV stuff. Uh, the item for topic of discussion today is part two of the review of this Dragon Link 1.2 gigahertz LNA. Um, so last time we swept it on the network analyzer, looked at its frequency response. Today we're going to look at its noise figure. Um, we're going to do a little background as to why noise figure is important for an LNA. Um, and then we'll get to making some measurements. So first, let's do that background. All right, so let's talk about what's in our standard video receivers. Um, got a couple little examples here. One of the goggle modules, the Fat Shark ones, uh, four channel, or the oh, is this eight channel, yeah, something like that. Um, so they all work kind of the same way. They have a bunch of different stuff inside, but the general concept is you've got some waveform, in our case at 1.2 gigahertz, and it's got a black box inside, and it's got to give you analog video out at baseband, right? So inside this, they might have some filtering, might have some mixing, some hello frequency, um, maybe some more filtering at baseband. Or at an IF, and then eventually it gets down to baseband. Usually there's a couple stages of amplification. Maybe there's an amp in here, um, something like that, and then it comes out with video and audio. All right, that's not too bad. Well, the order of the components here in the front end before the first stage of the mix, and even the mixer itself, is kind of important. Um, you can, in some cases, in some, some receivers, they'll have uh, an amplifier at the very front end. Um, and this, it's called a low noise amplifier, just like this Dragon Link device we're looking at here. Um, the goal of it is to overcome any losses further down the chain. And so, video receivers and receivers in general have this uh, figure of merit called the noise figure of the receiver. And it basically goes back to the idea that there's this fundamental thermal noise in all electronics. Um, it's minus 174. So at a 1 hertz bandwidth, the thermal noise is minus 174 dBm. So if you were to increase your bandwidth to say 10 hertz, uh, that would be minus 164. And you know, every time you increase it, you multiply the, the bandwidth by 10, it goes up by 10 dB. So it gives you a nice scaling and you can kind of figure out the fundamental thermal noise for whatever received bandwidth your receiver is operating across. All right, so anyways, this, number sets the floor essentially for the weakest signal you can receive assuming you have a 0 dB noise figure. Um, this is not possible, um, well maybe it's possible in some kind of academic lab setting with superconductors and that kind of stuff, but for all the electronics we'll de we deal with uh, everything has a certain amount of noise figure. With the idea being that Let's say, like in this case of this amplifier, I'm just going to throw out a number. Um, last time we measured that it has 14 dB of gain, um, and let's say it has a 1 dB noise figure. So, 14 And let's say this front end of our back black box, I don't know, has like a... 10 dB noise figure. All right. So there's an equation to calculate the cascaded noise figure, which essentially relies on the fact that even though the noise figure this is a one and that's 10, the overall noise figure of the system isn't 11. It relates to the gain of each stage along the way. Um, and it turns out that because the noise figure of this device is so low and its gain is so high, 
it's going to overcome this value and your cascaded noise figure maybe something like I'm, I'm just going to pull this out of my butt because I don't actually know what it is let's say it's, I don't know, 2 dB who knows we can look it up online but just for the sake of this argument that's what we're looking at so what this device is doing is if our receiver is I don't know, poorly designed is probably the wrong term. If it was value engineered. <laughs> if our receiver is value engineered and it has a high noise figure, um, this LNA will help us overcome that and will give us better sensitivity. But on the converse of that, if our receiver is actually properly designed, and let's say instead of having a 10 dB noise figure, it has like a 2 dB noise figure, this LNA is most likely not going to help us much. That extra dB of sensitivity we won't see any significant results from. And it might actually hurt us um, because this, in addition to increasing the strength of our, our weak signals, will also increase the strength of strong signals close by. Um, like, again, what we talked about last time, the 900 megahertz crossfire receivers, or sorry, transmitter that you're standing next to your receiver with, um, that signal just got amplified by 14 dB too, 14 dB as well. All right, so I'm rambling on. Maybe I should drink some more coffee, and let's get some measurements, all right? So how do we measure the noise figure? Well, you need a noise source. So this one was made by my friend John, coworker, um, and effectively the way it works is you've got a scale here, frequency, and effective noise ratio, ENR. So basically, you put 28 volts in, this has a noisy diode in it that basically puts out broadband noise at, at this power level. So basically, it, it's not frequency selective, it literally just spews out a buttload of noise. Um, so it'll be having an ENR of 16 dB, you know, maybe a little less than that, at where we care about. So this is going to come into play when we actually use the Y method um, to figure out what the noise figure of our LNA is. So you need this, you need this, and you need a spectrum analyzer that has a low enough noise figure. Um, in my case, I'm using a PXI chassis jabber over here. He's got a 10 dB noise figure, which isn't really good. Ideally, you'd want an LNA in front of it, um, but because we know this thing has 14 dB of gain, hopefully that should be uh, low enough to give us a reasonably accurate number. Um, I also went into work and double checked my results and I will post this along with the results from this video uh, but I just wanted to walk you through the actual process of, of measuring the noise figure of an LNA um, and the results do line up. So, alright, without further ado, let's get measuring. Alright. So, I got my fancy gaming headset, so hopefully my voice will be a little clearer than just speaking into the mic of the room. Um, so again, to measure noise figure, or, or what we're kind of looking to look at, um, we've got this noise source here that we're going to turn on and off, and we'll have our LNA on full time, and it's going into our spectrum analyzer over there. And so on screen, what we've got here in the upper left is our spectrum analyzer integrating power across 10 kilohertz bandwidth. That number is right there. So right now our LNA is on, but our noise source is off and our measured power is like 118.9 dBm. So we're gonna put that into our little MATLAB slash Octave script. All right, and next thing we're gonna do, come over here, and we're just going to turn our noise source on. Boop. There we go. And we see that the noise power comes up. So that's the second number. So minus 104.4. Let's go with. And we take this and go over to octave. Octave, octave. I didn't, never know how to pronounce it right, but we'll just go with that. Kind of like Linux and Linux or whatever. So. What's our magic number? There you go. 1.45. So there we go. 
So about 1.4, 1.5 dB noise figure. Again, we might be a little bit limited by the noise figure of my spectrum analyzer, um, but at least it gets us in the ballpark and shows us that this LNA is not like unbelievably stellar, because usually unbelievably stellar would be like a half dB noise figure, but it's also pretty good. You know, it's not like a three or four dB noise figure. So that's what it is. Uh, the next screen I'm actually going to show you is a measurement from work where we've got a, an, a spectrum analyzer that has a preamp on it that has a real nice uh, noise figure. And the numbers kind of correlate. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. In the next segment, we'll be wa measuring the IP3 of this device, and we'll talk about why that's important and how it plays together with your video receiver. So hope everybody's having a great morning, evening, afternoon, whatever. I will see you on the flip.